Alrighty. So, for the IR filter, um, I ended up getting a PS3 camera that could not be modified. So, what I ended up having to do was buy another lens and mounts for the lens. It's an S. It's a standard S mount, except that Sony uses a proprietary mount, which means it doesn't quite. It doesn't. Um, it doesn't screw into the circuit board quite right, but it works for this uh, situation. As you can see, it, this is one of my aftermarket lenses that I had to buy. This one is, I believe, eight millimeter focal length. So then, um, for my visible light filter, I was actually going to use this. As you see, I cut some stuff out trying to get it to fit in there. It did fit in there, but the problem is I didn't end up, I thought I bought a floppy disk. I actually ended up buying a called Zip Drive. It, um, it's thicker than a normal floppy disk. It's uh, two magnetic films in between a, or in between those is a um, non-magnetic uh, material. So it has a real hard time letting the light through. Um, so I ended up not putting one on there. Unfortunately, and then the okay. So then my infrared source is this little LED here. It's um, I think it puts out 840 nanometer wavelength. That or the 920, somewhere around there. Um, it has a 1.5 forward voltage. To get that, I did this a little. A little crude, but it works. I have a total of five one, two, three, four, five resistors. Three are in series, these two are in parallel, which is in series. The rest of them, they're all 51 ohms to get me to a roughly 178 ohm load to get me down to about 1.5 volts. Uh, I spliced that into the power wire here and the ground wire of the USB cable for the camera um, and then I had to reconnect the two data cables um, that was the trickiest part because they didn't want to rec reconnect properly so let's see and then okay <coughs> so my camera holder it's a quarter inch plywood painted black this is a PVC, I uh, can't remember what it's called, but this is a, an inch wide, inch diameter. This is three quarter inch diameter of the nest. Then you have this little circle, circle clamp here. Oop, I just delined it. Little circle clamp here that stops it from going down any further, but as you can see, it can still rotate and it can still lift up and down if I need it to. Um, it is attached with some adhesive to another piece of plywood that is about one foot by one foot it gives it a stable base this does unscrew here I'll show you with the chin rest kind of the same concept this, that's not gonna take out see PVC I believe it's three quarter inch PVC with a padded chin rest um, just some polyfill covered in a this brown fabric there's another fabric that's gonna go over it if I get the time and then this is the piece I was talking about. This actually does unscrew. It's the same concept as the other one. Um, this one I have a little extension there to give it a little extra lift. Um, this one does have a C clamp as, or the circle clamp as well. Uh, I have to find it, but for now it's doing what it needs to do. And uh, yeah, and then I covered up the LEDs here. They were kind of get. I think they were kind of altering my recording or my calibration. And then I'm just trying to keep the cables as stable as possible. So I use some sticky tack to keep the cables down, as well as some sticky tack to try to keep this from moving too too much. Uh, yeah, it's standard Elmer sticky tack. Um, but yeah. So here I'm using Visual Studio to compile the um, provided uh, code. So first I need to 
unplug, or bleh, plug in the camera. I guess I can't do that. Oh, I had it right. Come on now. Thank you. All right. So now I'll click the start button. Let it load up. I don't have the fastest computer in the world, but it does okay. Why is it having such a hard time focusing? Hmm. The program's taking forever. There it goes. Wow, it's taking a really long time this time. Oh, there it goes. <clears throat> All right. So as you can see, it is recording. I found that head mounted gave me the best results. Um, I had to turn the glint off. It, it wouldn't work with it for some reason. I'm gonna go ahead and set the components. Okay, my mouse is being weird. There we go. Oh man, really? Thank you. This mouse is dying. Let's see. Okay. I noticed I wasn't getting more than about 25 frames per second, so I went down to 25 on the mode. Calibration, speed it up a little bit. Right. Now we can start here. I'll try. As you can see, I'm just follow using my eyes to follow this white dot around the screen. Once the screen pops up, it gets real slow, real buggy. Okay. It's also going to mess up because I have this camera right here in front of it. There you go. Um, I've noticed that this, although it says zero, it it's real finicky if I move my head at all, or if I like change it just a little bit, it's a lot less accurate. But, if I keep it exactly how it was during calibration, it's it's pretty close, usually. I see now I lost my, uh, I lost my eye, I can't find it. Oh, now it's recording my nose. Try calibrating. Oof, that one was real bad. 
do that one. Got two stars, 0.1 accuracy. Um, I'll be back. All right, let me load it up. As you can see, it's identifying my eye and my nose. Fairly accurate. It's trying to get to where I'm looking, which is right here. Any movement of the head alters it by quite a bit.